Hi there. So these guys, they are, they turned five weeks old on Monday. They'll be six weeks old um, right after Christmas. The Monday after Christmas, they'll be six weeks old. Um, they are, oh, their feet. Roman is probably our most snuggly puppy we've ever had come through our house. Huge, huge good boy, huge good boy. Um, they got a toenail trim a couple days ago. Roman started picking up feeding, um, like the real puppy food. He started, um, let me keep real quick. Roman has been eating the puppy food way better. He, um, I think my two eggs on top finally did it. Um, I gave him like a little taste of it and he just wanted more. And he was only like drinking the liquidy part and the egg. And then finally he started eating the mash. And then yesterday, um, Pom Pom was just overeating at her bowl. Where was the day before? And Blue went crawling up under her belly between her legs and came out between her legs and grabbed a kibble um, and started eating it. And so uh, then I got, I stamped a picture yesterday, actually right before I started the, the stream yesterday, Pom Pom and Blue were laying down by her food dish and he was uh, like playing with her tail. It was kind of annoying her. And she kept kicking him off and he kind of landed in her food dish at one point and he was like, oh. And so he took a couple of bites and he pulled him out of the dish and was like crunching him up into little pieces. His jaw is not quite strong enough, which is which is why we do like the puppy mash the way we do. Um, because when they've just been nursing, they don't have this, the muscle strength in their jaws to chew dry kibble. Um, and so when we do the puppy mash, we kind of, we advance it, it starts off really, really soft. Um, and then the more they eat it, the more, um, the less we, or the, the less time we will give it to soften, um, so that the center is harder and, um, it strengthens their jaw muscles, essentially is what we're trying to do. So then they can eat the dry kibble, just like mom. Where's a good boy? Where's a good boy? Go to. 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 Use two feet on this guy. That's where we use two feet. And it's much more fun to play with than the human way. Roman loves this toy. I think this might be his. Because I have to go home with this toy. Such a good boy. Switch. Man, so usually when puppies are about this age, it usually, um, with the pine and everything, that kills a lot of the smell of pee and poop and all that. Um, but when you get in the pen, sometimes you can like have a little more of a whiff, but it doesn't smell, like I sit down here, I should, should smell some pee. But I must say, I'm very impressed with our boys. Their pen doesn't smell like pee. It just smells like, it smells like pine. You're doing so well. Your pee is going where it belongs. Mostly. We cleaned up a few accidents, but that's okay. And so when I do this with them, they'll start they'll start doing this. And then they'll get into these really rowdy fights. <laughs> they think bigger, they're like absolutes, they're they embody the sibling sibling conflict really well. Like they're super, super close, but they also despise each other sometimes. You guys are gonna be such good doggies. I wanna keep rolling. I wanna keep them both. Yeah. 
know, so Roman does a lot of that. <laughs> <clears throat> Bradley, our son, was worried that Roman was becoming a bully dog. Um, and so I assured, assured him that because um, he, he noticed that Roman was chewing on Blue's ears a little bit more and Blue wasn't liking it. And, um, but like when you see that sort of stuff, you'll, you, you'll see it really in all of our puppies kind of around this age, it's, it's more of a phase. You know, they're learning how sharp their teeth are and they're learning that based on the reaction they get from others when they use them. Um, and so he's just, Roman is starting that phase right now and he'll figure it out, <laughs> he'll figure it out. And this is where we also start teaching the gentle, 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 no teeth and play nice. And when they can't find anything to use with their teeth, but you, give them a toy. Give them what they can use. Yeah, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Yeah, I see we can have lots of fun together, but with a toy. Huh? They put the toys on people. If ever there was a people dog, it's wrong. <laughs> it's a good boy. Um, we received a, um, I call it a complaint. Um, we received, um, a comment that, uh, the names of our dogs were not sophisticated enough that the name Pom Pom is for poodles. And so I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> for one, I suck at naming dogs. And some of our dogs have been named by three-year-old children. So there's that. Um, but Pom Pom's name actually, Spike was named by our three-year-old. Um, Pom Pom, she's, she's, named, she, she's named after Pompeii, the city. And so we just call her Pom Pom for short because when well, we brought her home, they were Paris and Pompeii. And Pompeii sounded, sorry, sounded a little kind of boyish. And it didn't roll off the tongue very well. So um, when we were like calling in, we were trying to figure out like a good nickname for Pom Pom, for Pom Pom, for Pompeii. And it's like we could come up with like Pompous, Pompey. And so Pom Pom, it became. So, um, and then, you know, Paris, Paris, France, Pompeii, Italy. So that's where their names came from. They're like the only dogs that <laughs> whose names I think they're actually kind of decent. Because I'm terrible at naming dogs. No shade on the dogs, it's me. I think Remy, Remy got her name because we were at such a loss and we asked our daughter's friend if she could think of anything and she was like, mm, how about Remy? So we're pretty bad at names. We are bad. And then when we have our families come along and we ask them for names, because you know our puppies are always have kind of crummy names that we give them. And then our families come along with these amazing names, and I have no idea. Like Roman? Oh my gosh, what a good name. I never would have thought of it. And it's so perfect because his mom is Pompeii. How cute. But I wouldn't have thought of that because I'm not that I'm not that sophisticated. But Roman boy, you're such a pretty boy. You're such a pretty boy. You're such a pretty boy. I love you. I love you. His eyes are so blue. So, so it's like when they're blue like this, sometimes, a lot of times they just go dark eventually. 
know, because their eyes are closed for two weeks, and so who knows what color they are. But his are not like there's no pigment changing anywhere. He's, they're just staying solid, baby blue. Like they look like people, like newborn infant eyes. So it's so cool. Ah, no teeth. Ah, uh -uh. no teeth. Good boy. That's where we teeth. That's where we teeth. I know you like to teeth this thing. Roman is definitely a mouth puppy. He is a player. He's gonna need lots of toys. <laughs> He's a good boy. Shoot. Good morning, Waffles. <laughs> we found her like little ducklings. Hi, Mom. You're such a good girl. We can feel Paris's puppies moving now. Oh my gosh. I can't. I'm so excited for her litter. Paris is such a good dog. She's gonna be a good mama. Go. Good morning, love pugs. It's our first day with the kids on uh, winter break, and so the morning has been. Can somebody pinch you? Morning has been not chaotic, but it's not like not our regular routine, so. I'm kind of we're all thrown off. What's the matter, sweetie? Sometimes when our nails get sharp, it hurts when they when they need her her boobies. They need their paws. And sharp nails can make it hurt. 
just click them. So I'm just going to go here. Try to you. Maybe that one might need a twirl. Let's see my nail clippers. So I'm going to my nail clippers were just here. Alright, we'll do. We'll do it a little later. It's not an emergency. Is that blue? Pom Pom is getting ready. I don't know if you've noticed at all, but she's, um, she'll lay with them, but she's not nearly as snuggled up and she's less tolerant of their antics. Um, if you haven't noticed, kind of just pay attention when, um, when they lay down with her, if she's like already sleeping or if they wake her up, she's just a little less patient overall. It's kind of hard to think of an exact example, but, um, if you just pay attention to their interactions and like keep in mind that um like look for those things see like um see if she's as willing to tolerate um all their baby stuff because it's subtle she's it's just awesome because she's just doing a little gradual just starting to set boundaries with them which is good for little pom-pom she's so timid and she lets a lot of the other dogs just kind of walk all over her. She's a good dog. She's a good girl. Look at you doing, babies. <laughs> See, she's like telling them no. This is her trying to put her, so she's like trying to put the milk away. Go heat them up some food. Start mixing it so that they can have that to eat. Hi there, Alec. I love you too.
All right, pom pom. I've got their food cooking. Their food's are cooking. That's a little bit better. I want it to be covered in snow. Oh, I'm sure the storm, after the snowstorm, it will be covered in snow. It's going to be really bright in our house because the sunlight's going to be reflecting off of it. Yay, because then me and Bob can play in it. Yeah. Yes, and I can blow bubbles. And that down Does she? Yeah. yeah she has to look it. Cause when uh dad called Harrison Remy in, uh, -huh. uh I looked at Harrison's back and I saw a butterfly mark. mash here. It's got a little cooking left to do, so I'm going to set it off the side here. I got an egg to put on top. And then once, once it softens a little more and I can mash it up a little better. Their, their puppy mash. They ate so much more of it yesterday that um, I made them a little bit more today, hoping that after such a good day yesterday, they really want to fill up on mash. Especially with how pom pom is not wanting to put up with their their nursing anymore. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm sorry. 
Where's you go to Ruby? I'll come you go to your We haven't so true. Uh it's um you need to know if it I mean to the right. Oh hey, she's going on to the next pop card. Mm -hmm. Uh, good morning, Sue. You know, Blue, I see how I, I see what you're saying about Blue and Henry. I see it too. I see a uh, chance in Blue as well. Chance in Henry. It's hard to chew. It's hard to chew. Dogs, Spike.
Good morning, John. Remy. Yeah, that is nice. John, I'm sorry, I'm referring to your 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 comment, three day weekend that you don't earn any PTO for. When I was I was working um, at one of our state prisons um, at my last job before I decided to start doing the dogs full time. Um, and we had a similar sort of, I, I just remember trying to, like when we had holidays on, the state holidays on Sundays, we would usually get that Monday off because I worked every, I worked Monday through Thursday. I worked our shifts Monday through Thursday. I saw the burn PTO. So are you, are you, do you get to, how's January 1st work out for you? Or is that fall on the weekend and not matter in your case? Funny. These pom pom is kind of in the so let's see, I should probably change the angle of this because you can see the other one red. 
All right. So there's my phone. <laughs> Just like I found a hidey hole. Mm, the camera's dry. There's the boys. So just a little bit so that you can kind of get a better feel for their where they are. That's what their corner looks like. I mean, be mine. Try not to get to focus. So I'll move it again. As they move, I'll move it to where they're most visible. When they're uh, awake and playing, usually the eye level is what works. And when they're sleeping, or the bird's eye view works better. So we'll, we'll adjust it as they wake up. I'm sorry, Remy is being so loud. She wants to come play with them.
Maybe we can have it with Danny's yummy happy Christmas break breakfast. Hi there, Clarice. So they're not in a, they're in an S pen for safety reasons because they're in our house. So they're by no means in a cage whatsoever. Um, they have lots of plush bedding and toys. Raw egg for breakfast. They are very well taken care of. Yeah. Watch our channel for a little bit longer than. Uh, Don't be snappy. Don't be snappy. Daddy, can I show you how many beers I found? 
Lot of them break. Hi, Char! Merry Christmas! I haven't seen you in a while. I don't have any makeup on, kind of just rolled out of bed, but hi! How are you?
the kids are just started their winter break, so it's like we have the snowstorm. We have a snowstorm coming, so we're doing like we're just staying in, doing nothing. Aww. You always have such a positive attitude. It's nice having it's nice having you around. How have you been? It's so nice to see you. I feel like it's been a while. At least it's, uh, I should say it's been a while since I've seen you. Um, like actually on like uh, you've been on the chat when I've been here. We're doing really well, I'm sure. I hope you've been doing well too. I'm so glad you dropped by. We're back to being on 24 hours, so whenever you want to drop by, we'll be here. We didn't think it so. Christmas Day. Um, we were trying to think of um, we were gonna bring the puppies um, with us so that they were like part of Christmas and we get some pictures of them with their fam for, for their families. And so we we're trying to think of bringing the live in with us. So we're trying to just figure out logistics, but um, we're gonna be live on Christmas Day too. So. Um, there was somebody who had said something about not maybe not knowing if their family would be there or coming over. And I think it like worked out for them, but then we were thinking like, oh, there's people that might not have people to be with. So we should make sure we have our live on. Because we can share our Christmas. Oh, thanks. Good morning, Heather. Yeah. Oh. There's a crack. There's a crack. Well, it's really small and it's it's under like under Yeah, sure. We've had a we've had a surprise that we've been very humbled by how much support we have had. We were kind of because when we first started um live streaming our puppies. We know that um, it's kind of a sensitive issue for some people. And so we were kind of nervous about making it public to everybody. 
um, and not like instead of just leaving them unlisted and sending the links to families. So we've been very humbled by the support that we've had and Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you one more hug. It's in that back room. That made me so sweet. You're so sweet, Star. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. You're so sweet. You guys are all so sweet. The snowstorm is like really close. You can do the under the headboard. It's like freezing. I put my hand there and it's really cold. This is my baby dad again. We have we can keep the house. We that's why we're hunkering down. But my dad went out and did like all of your Christmas shopping in like two days. Um, no, we've had some pretty bad snowstorms because there was a snowstorm here that took out our plumbing. Remember, not the plumbing, but our um, the pipes. Oh yeah. That were still working. <laughs> Bella, what's wrong? What's wrong? Wait. Um. Oh, 
Are they actually going in the kitchen? Go in the kitchen instead of shouting across the house. Oh, no, no. What do you want? Do right, you want to go with us? What is the puppy pen? This puppy pen? This puppy pen is empty. It doesn't have puppy pen in it. Thank you. 
the bouncy ball is going to get destroyed. Oh, it was dry. It was a dryer, as in it was already dry. I thought he meant like it was actively drying. Sorry. Where is that Because that's the I'm thing. sure Dad hit because you guys were. I was going a little it. nutty with that thing. I was using it in my room. And then Dad just hit it because it fell over. Well, you know what I mean? You gotta clean up if you want Christmas presents. Because right now, our closet, Dan and I can't even see the floor because there's so much stuff around. So, that means that all of this needs to be cleaned up. Like the living room, the dining room, everything needs to be picked up. If it belongs to you, take it to your bedroom. If you don't want it, throw it in the garbage can out in the Four Seasons room because um, it's good that trash bag, yeah, that trash can is bigger, and we don't all load up the kitchen, kitchen trash garbage. I think it's a good time to do it, Ian. Yeah. If you're not doing anything else, I'm finding bigger. No, we don't need to clean up the basement right now. We need to clean up the, the Christmas area. Bradley. It's good though if you're in the cleaning mood. That helps. Well, you said you're, you're cleaning up the fidgets in the basement. I'm not cleaning. I'm not cleaning the fidgets. I'm not cleaning the roof. Exactly. Okay. Right. I think What's that? I just, I just wanted to know that you have to that's not all there is. But the living room is bigger than your closet. And like, yeah. we need space in there, but so and we need to start cleaning up. Here's the thing you want to be in that little secret? Can you keep a secret? So, you guys. On Christmas morning, you're going to open your presents, and then when um, May and then you just fill up the Carter are going to come all on the day after Christmas. And so the day after Christmas, we're basically going to do Christmas Eve all over again. We're going to do a jamming hunt, and then um, 
uh, in the morning, you're going to have more presence of fun. And so your the, the, the secret that they're in on is that if you're getting a few extra things, then then um, you know. and so but that means it's going to be a little bit fuller. And so that means we need more room, more space because we have to room to open everything. We need room to put it into tiles. And there's five of you.
you in Paris, but it's gonna bring you out into the light for those who wanted to see Paris. Paris! Paris is doing eight days. Eight days. She is <laughs> she's such a good girl. She slept with us last night. Um, she usually sleeps with our daughter. She usually sleeps with our daughter, and our daughter is at um, her dad's house for Christmas. So she's sleeping with us now. And she was, she's awesome. She's been awesome to sleep with. Paris! Paris! I know you really want to see the babies. You're going to stay out here and let them sleep. Paris. Say hi. Paris is a blenum. Paris. Paris is a blenum. She's um, a litter mate to Pom Pom. Pom Pom is short for Pom Pom. She's, so she, we got them together. Um, we actually first got, we first chose Pom Pom. And then, um, and then I saw that the breeder had Paris still available. Uh, I saw that Reader had Paris still available, and um, she was beautiful. She still is, and so we got her too. We're like, let's just knock out the puppy stage with these guys at the same time. Oh, no, Paris, you had breakfast. You had breakfast. She wants to go see the babies. <laughs> oh, Paris, not right now. The babies are sleeping. We're gonna let them sleep. <laughs> Shh, sh, sh, sh. Oh, the good girl. The good girl. Um, so she's she's due in eight days. So the day is the thirtieth. Um, our due dates usually are very, they're pretty, pretty accurate. Um, the most off we've been is um, two days. We had um, we had a couple dogs go two days over. Usually it's one day over. It's almost probably like almost half of the time they're one day over. Um, then we had a couple on their due date. And then Tom Tom was a few days early. And this was her, her one letter. And this is also Paris's first letter. She's a good girl. 
she's she um she's the only moonlight that likes to wash. She's she's a primary she primarily is serves as a an ESA and emotional support animal. There's someone she would come see me. She is so focused on those babies. But so she, um, her primary purpose is as an emotional support animal. Uh, Mommy. Yes, sweetie. Um, in five minutes. Is that time I have my, I have my, on the second, on the second stair. Oh, okay. Give me five minutes, okay? Yeah. It's ten forty-six, so at ten fifty-one. Okay, so when we um, picked up Paris and Pom Pom, um, my our daughter came with me and they were in Oklahoma so it was a 14 hour drive one way and so we stayed in a hotel we went and got them from the breeder and we, we stayed the night in the hotel with them and uh, our daughter had been going through um, some issues at the time and she in Paris clicked in, um, in, in a completely indescribable way um, it was like they were soulmates that never knew they loved each other. It was amazing. Um, and she's all but a cure for our daughter's anxiety. And so we're working on actually making, um, training her to be a psychiatric dog. <coughs> Harris. All right, we're going to move you away from the baby. All in all, Paris is amazing. <laughs> She's a great dog. We are hoping that um, she'll kind of pass that on to her puppies, that um, she'll be able to kind of teach them. Whatever it is she does that's so amazing, I just hope that she's able to show them the way. Um, because she's a really special dog. And so, oh, and then we'll be streaming her delivery. We So we have this stream just kind of runs, we have it up 24 hours a day. Um, the stream is almost always within, it's running within a 12 hour time frame. And that's because we have to restart it every 12 hours because... YouTube only <clears throat> YouTube only store up to 12 hours of footage. And so we lose everything after 12 hours. And so we just make it a, a twice a day thing. And every morning and every night, we, we have a daytime stream and a nighttime stream, basically. And so we'll be kind of updating the stream, kind of as we are now about Paris, as she gets closer to her due date. Um, we'll be bringing her by. And <clears throat> What we didn't do before, like with Robin and Daisy, that we'll do this time, it'll be a lot easier, is um, kind of having her having her more involved with the live stream, I guess, um, just because she and Pom Pom are so close, and Pom Pom is not, um, Pom Pom likes to have Paris around with her puppies. So it'll be easier to have Paris nearby, and so we can kind of show you guys the signs of labor and kind of how labor advances, and. Um, we can even show you, because usually like a couple days we have some false alarms, and so we'll, um, we'll be able to show you kind of why we were suspicious and what made it not, not labor and those sorts of things. Um, and then of course, finally then when she does actually go into labor and pops out that first puppy, it's amazing. It's always really amazing. And then after that, we raise them to be, well, first we, we make sure we need them to grow and put on weight and open their eyes. Um, but then we try our best to raise them to be, to be great companion dogs. Is our goal. 
I need to cut out some of Paris's mats. She settled down this whole time I was talking. I could have had looking at her. Oh, now she's gonna whine. Ah! What is this? I had the camera up and she stopped whining. She's getting a little too hormonal to be in there with the puppies anyway. No. I think she smells pom poms. I mean, food. Yeah, so we're going to cut out some of your mats. No, Paris, come back. Paris. Paris, you're too hormonal to be in there with them. They're sleeping. We need to have the mask. We got some mats. Yes, we got some mats.
Hey, you want to come over this hall with me?
have an egg, by the way. With the yolk attached. Oh, the yolk exploded.
Thank you, Daddy, for the cinnamon roll. I would love an egg. I would love an egg. I love you. Thank you. Here's a clean for ears.
Walmart doesn't really say Walmart doesn't 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 say
the only part of the elves, but if the elves have so much magic that they're we can do everything they do, I think we'll be okay. Yeah. Hi there, Kyle. I'm just seeing your message. Oh, I was our camera blurry. Um, here, um, I can really appreciate how much fun it would be to see um, to see the reaction of the dogs when they hear an air raid siren. Um, however, I don't want to do that. I don't want to trust them out. Um, <laughs> So sorry, I I will I won't be doing that. Um, but I can appreciate how funny it would be. Ooh, just not on our, just not on the dino dice. Well, I mean, I was in particular. All right, this dining room table is covered in stuff. It can't be. If we want that purpose. Santa meets Santa's a big fat guy, so. Gotta be able to turn around with this giant sack of toys. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Haven't you seen pictures of him? Haven't you seen the uh, Christmas crossbow? Makes great offense to people on his back. Because he stays away from uh, carbs and uh, does cardio every day. I've watched it with the kids. But that's how it goes, yeah, like, it's the character, uh, doesn't like the, the fat Santa. It sounds like it's, um, safe to only a small thing, not that strict. I'm gonna put this one downstairs. And I wonder if Robin likes being back in that pen where her puppies aren't here anymore, and so it's like it feels kind of like homelessness to her. Uh, sort of have that sort of
Around. Is there anybody from um, the UK on right now? I know we have some people who watch from the UK. I was because I was just thinking about um, the Harry and Meghan documentary that came out, and I just wanted to hear a perspective from somebody from the UK. Is all I could hardly stay. I did just I drew and I watched the documentary, and I watched most of it through a. Um, one of my YouTube channels that like analyzes behavior, um, body, um, body language. And so, like I almost couldn't stand to give Netflix the ratings. But I wanted to hear, I was curious what our UK people thought of it, or thought of the whole ish, the whole fiasco. And then our rug is coming apart. We're gonna have to get a new one eventually. Our rug. Our rug is coming apart. Yeah. How does it? Yeah, I probably wouldn't do it right now because I'm sure the prices are insane. Uh, This over, we just had them. It's
Oh, Drew. You know what would make sense? You know what we've been talking about? Like, oh, yeah. Thank you. 
Oh, Bradley, just a heads up, the Wednesday stuff was impossible to find the current time, so I really, I searched hard for that stuff. But I wanted you to know that I didn't, I didn't forget about it, I did see it. Thank you. 
Dad's okay with if you don't get that for Christmas, and dad's okay with you buying it with the money with your Christmas money. I got it. I got it. I know, but I'll bring it in case you change your mind. 
mind. That way you don't need to like come get us. Why, why would you be going for Christmas presents? Yeah. Because I can. No, you can't. Thank you. 
Start this fire.
Oh, are you okay?
how you pronounce it. Oh my goodness, a bunch of people joined us. Hi, Ian. And how I pronounce this? Quarantin? Quarantin? Diana, good morning to you. Or good afternoon to you. I'm going to move this so that we can see them on a high level. Look at, so Pom Pom ate a lot of the food, but um, Roman and Blue are doing a lot better with you your food. Yes, I'm still in my pajamas. We're doing, we have a snowstorm that started. Some of you are aware. Sorry, I gotta loop the cord. Goodness gracious. <laughs> it's like set on top of it. Fiorella, I'm not sure if you're still on, but I just had a chance to read through your comments and I just wanted to say thank you for your support. That means a lot to me. I'll tell Drew that you said that. So we're kind of like, you know, you can't say anything nice at all. Why? Or how does it go? You can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Goodness, you two. Dogs are all excited.
Whenever we have a pregnant mama, she always gets priority. So, like, our pregnant mama just kind of gets to be with us all the time. Mostly for like safety reasons, we just always want to know where she is and make sure she's um, not going into labor. We always, in the later weeks, we just um, we're always monitoring for early labor. Um, but we just want to make sure she's staying out of trouble, not eating anything that. You know how dogs are, um, but like usually, um, like in order to maintain like a healthy, um, a, a healthy like a healthy pack of dogs like with us, so that the dogs kind of respect us as the alphas. Usually, we leave our bedroom off limits. It's like a place where dogs just don't get to go. Um, it's for our pregnant moms; they get to sleep in there. And so they've all, um, like, mom's mom, now that she's out here, she's, she's always trying to sneak into our bedroom, and now it's Paris's domain. And so Paris always wants to be in our bedroom, because it's quite a treat for them. Sorry, the noise is better now. But so Paris, um, the dogs, since our bedroom is off limits, usually, since that's like what's normal. Um, our bedroom is a special place. Here is. Come here. Here is. Come here. Here is hanging out with Robin. A little crowded with you and pom pom, so we're gonna put pom pom. We have to pick them up very gently when they're just pregnant. Roman. So when they're this pregnant, we have to kind of make them up like, like so, kind of like ahead of their neck and under their butt. She doesn't want you to drink her milk. Ooh, good puppies. Yes, Aunt Paris is getting a little crabby as she enters her last week. She wants to be in here, but she doesn't want to see the puppies. We're making a bet now over the corner. Hell yeah. He's a good boy, Roman. Good girl, Paris. Here's her nipples and all. Oh, you're a good boy. You're a good boy. Mm. What did you find, Paris? Did you find some food tables? Paris. Paris should be looking a little bit better because I was able to get some of the mats out of her. She had some freaking mats in her ears. I got those out, and then there's a knot. She had her fur that Roman was using as like a handle to hang on to her, poor thing. So I got that off. 
Outside. Oh, are they running in the snow? They are like, they don't know what to do with them. Aww. Oh, I bet pregnant Paris would be so pretty. Running around the snow. And not like in a society, like we're having fun sort of way. Like, oh. Hey, They're in a miserable. Like a, oh my god, what is this stuff that's on the ground that's making my thoughts so cold? Jeez, oh, I thought they were having fun. No, they're not having fun. <laughs> they're being prissy. Yeah. They're being spoiled. Our dogs love to be outside. They will stay outside all day long until it gets cold. And then they get very needy. What's up, Paris? Just wait till you're in here. Paris. 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 So this will be Paris's first litter of puppies. Um, if you wanted to catch the live stream, we're gonna stream her delivery. If you did not know, I've said that like three dozen times now. So I apologize for hearing it a lot. Um, so we'll be streaming her delivery if you wanted to catch it. Um, and then we'll post the stream afterward so that if you catch it when we're live, um, it will be posted. And, and then I'll have the opportunity to throw in timestamps. Because, um, you know, when she first goes into labor, there's a lot of waiting. Uh, and then, but we'll be able to update kind of live stream that's out here, kind of what's going on. Um, anybody who's viewing will kind of uh, have an idea if she's looking like labor is coming we usually they start panting a lot they do, they do everything the pom-pom did not do when she went into labor um, but we're excited because since it's her first litter um there's going to be more for us to do which means there's going to be more to explain and show you guys and kind of um because when mom does it all the time we kind of um it's easy to forget what all to mention and talk about. But when we're trying, when we need to do it for her and we're trying to show her what to do, it's easier to explain why we're doing it, how we're doing it, why we're doing it. Oh my gosh, it does look like a butterfly. Paris has a tramp stamp on her. Have you checked it? Have you looked at it? Yeah, she was right. There was definitely a butterfly on her lower back. You silly girl. You're so pretty. I love you. You're so pretty. Once he gets you in trouble, I don't know. And Paris is starting to nest. So she's she's getting ready. She's over there digging a hole. He 
is. Come on, don't rip up the whole bag. Come on, I don't know. I'll just take you on it. Paris is doing, Paris is nesting a lot. She's doing what? She's like tearing up the bedding in here. Through. You're such a good girl, Paris. You are so, I don't know if you guys can really see. Paris is being so patient. It is snowing, Laura or Laura Lori. It, is, it started snowing. Drew was just telling me that he let out the dogs, and he's like, "Oh, you should see them. They're they were um, they were a real surprise at the snow." And so I thought that they were having fun, and as it turned out, they weren't having fun. They were like, "Get us out of here!" That sort of surprise. They were being um, princes and princesses. Which is why the potty tray is awesome. Especially Daisy, she usually will just like go out and she'll just kind of pull a UE and come right back in and run for the potty tray. Ah, ah, Roman, uh, uh. Boy. Tip the world on. Tip, 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 tip. You want a toy? Paris loves toys. She is in the lamp. Oh, you're probably bad. Parents. All right, let's put you in the bedroom so that you can have your best life in the bedroom. Come on, Paris. Let's fix their bed. Shoot over my lamp. Come on, sweetie. Come here. Paris, come here. So I can pick you up. Hi, Shalini. Hey, Shalini, will you be watching the Meghan and Harry documentary? <laughs> no, it's Paris. Paris, I'll put her back in for a second. She was off to the side, so it's kind of hard to see her. As is Paris. She's in, that, she's in here nesting, working up her blankets, so I'm just going to put her in our bedroom to, to nest in there. So I don't know if Pom Pom really wants her to whelp in here. Hi. Paris, come here. I want blue to be sucking on your nipple. Come here. Come here. <laughs> oh, that's so funny, Shalini. Yeah, so I don't want to give Netflix our um, support, or I guess their documentary. So I was just watching it through the, I follow this channel. Um, this guy studies um, body language. And so there's this whole panel of guys that study their body language. And so they're playing the show through their channel and then commenting on their body language. And so it's been hilarious because um, the guys in the the guys on the panel don't really care for them either. So but I wanted to get your take.
Yeah, that's true. You're thinking the same thing, right? There's no need to start.
Not yet, sweetie. I will. I just um need to do something on the computer real quick. Yeah. 
Okay. Hi there, Nikki. Uh, so we um, 
We do not um, raise our dogs to add to dog overpopulation. We raise our dogs so that families um, have an option of getting a dog that has a, that they can raise to be um, their dog as opposed to, and it's not everybody can find the dog they're looking for and rescue. And that's a problem we ran into and it's not for everybody. Um, we've rescued dogs. I um, I actually used to um, be a foster home. Before I met Drew, I was a foster home for rescue dogs. And we evaluated them. We assessed them. We worked with them, actually, to There was a lot of them came in very traumatized. And so we had to do a lot of confidence building, um, work on trust issues. A lot of them came in with, like, food aggression. Um, and then we would place them with their homes. But so... Um, having that knowledge that dogs come with that history. Um, we wanted, when we were looking for our Cavalier, we wanted our Cavalier to, we wanted to raise our Cavalier from birth. Um, always rescue. If you can find your dog and rescue, please do rescue. Um, we raise our dogs for the people who can't find the dog that they want in a rescue. And so I just like to be very clear that by no means are we against rescues. We don't, we absolutely support them. Um, we are trying to, um, it's very difficult to find the type of dog that a lot of people are looking, the families that we run into, it's difficult to find the kind of dog they are looking for in a rescue or in a shelter. Um, and so the, there's kind of it, the logic, the whole adopt to don't shop logic is flawed because if you think about it, if we just adopt all the dogs and all of the shelters and all the rescues, we're not going to have any well-bred dogs that we can have as pets. And so um, we absolutely wanted, we are, we are so happy to hear about um um, there's all kinds of new legislation. Like in Illinois, they just passed a law that dogs can't be sold in pet stores. So that's a huge step. The problem that actually, that actually created, though, is that puppy mills are now posing as breeders. And that was something that we actually learned when we were um, looking for one of our cavaliers, was that they will post a listing and you have to really do your research and ask them the right questions um, to find out. Uh, where exactly your dog is coming from because there's a lot of puppy mills actually kind of in our area that now with Illinois um, no longer allowing dog sales in stores, um, those, those puppy mills now need a new clientele. And so they're posing as breeders. Absolutely, Lucy, I agree. They are not breeders. They need to introduce some sort of legislation that would like draw a distinction. Um, that's why when we hear about, uh, if you're, if anybody's looking for a puppy, um, and you you don't know like a breeder like word of mouth. The best place to get a referral is by somebody you know because they've done a lot of that like work already, um, and then they've seen they've gotten the puppy. They've gone done the whole process, and so it's great if you can get a referral. If you can't find somebody that can give you a referral, um, the websites I would avoid would be um, puppyfind.com, puppyfinder.com. Um, those are the websites that have basically marked up, I should say all of them, a lot of the listings, by no means all of them, but many of the listings are just marked up puppy mill dogs, um, which is something we kind of just discovered by trial and error when we were searching for one of our dogs. Um, and that was kind of when we found the website Good Dog. So gooddog.com and puppyspot.com, 
they vet their breeders and make sure that they are breeding, like they're breeding to better the breed. They're breeding to produce quality pets. They aren't just breeding to produce a paycheck. Oh no, I can totally see that happening though. Shalini says in the UK, when all the people got puppies and they were all doing nothing, all the puppies were then abandoned when everybody went back to work. I mean, never like, I never considered that, that and that makes total sense. That's, oh my gosh, that's so sad. That's why we, um, we don't advertise when we have litters. We just have our website and we have our families kind of. Um, I don't really call it an app. I hate, I don't want to call it an application process. We just want to talk to our families and find out like, um, to find out how committed they are and get a feel for, is it, is it just a trend? Like, oh, everybody's getting puppies. Like you mentioned Shalini. That's so sad. I'm gonna um, since you guys bring that up, I'm gonna look, I want to look that up now, like in our area, and see what our area kind of looks like. There's a cavalier in a shelter, Dad. We need to go get it. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, so there was a cavalier in a shelter nearby. I'm gonna go pick it up. Not that other dogs aren't amazing, but we only have so much room. We all, um, we, to kind of cover that issue with our puppies, we actually put in our contract with families that if they um, are, if they can no longer keep their puppy, that they'll bring them back to us if they can't find another home for them or whatever, that we will take them no matter what. If they're five years old, we will take them. We'll always take them back because we don't want our puppies to, no, we don't want any puppies to go to shelters, but we don't want, um, like I said, we don't want to be adding to the overpopulation. We just want to fill a, a need where there is one. Ah, oh no. What? What, Mom? What? No, oh, nothing, Bella, nothing. It's just, that's so sad. Oh, it's been Spaniel. That's, um, the uh, rescue that we fostered for was um, English Breeder Rescue America, Ezra. We fostered English Breeder Spaniels. Wow. They're amazing. I'm so sad that you didn't get, get her. Oh. Oh, I want to go run by all of the local shelters and Get the Cavaliers. Springers are so awesome. It was actually knowing Springers that I was able to convince Drew into Cavaliers. Um, since we're on the topic, if you happen to be looking for a puppy, um, and you're, you are like, are not, no, you don't know where to look or start. The best thing you can do is, um, ask them some questions that will kind of elucidate whether or not they're, um, ethical breeders. And some of those questions can be, um, like the biggest one is, can you come at some point to either meet the puppy, to pick them or to meet them just after you've, after you've put a deposit down, just so that you can meet them. Um, a lot of times 
breeders, they will try to, the breeders, the, the non-breeders, the backyard breeders, they may try to accommodate that request, but they will do it. Um, they won't want you in the house. So like if you go there and they bring the puppy outside, especially if the weather is not appropriate for it, um, they just bring the puppy outside or if they just avoid it altogether. Aww. Since during the time I spent with that Springer, her dog, um, all she wanted was pets. She would just sit in her chair all day and ask to get pet. Aww. The Springer that I grew up with, she would like put her nose, if you're just like sitting, hanging out, she would put her nose under your arm and then like slide it so that it forced you to pet her. So like, I'll show you. It's like your arm's just like this. She would take her nose and just slide it under until your arm went up over her head and you had to pet her. Oh, so it's been over a year since you saw her. Oh. I love spaniels. And I think another thing that gets lost, this is, you know, probably going to be an unpopular opinion, um, but something that gets lost in the whole adopt, don't shop phrase is that when we're breeding, like when we breed pom-pom or like when we breed Paris, um, we are breeding to, we're breeding them to keep the cavalier breed and everything that's great about them great. Um, and with using the logic of only getting of only um, of all people only getting rescue dogs and um, not having any breeders whatsoever um, is kind of flawed because only the the only dogs we would have then would be ones that are um, kind of breeding indiscriminately and aren't preserving the qualities of the breed because people you know they like dogs for different reasons some people like retrievers and um, we like spaniels. Um, and there's things that are different about them that that separate them, make, that, that differentiate them from each other. And so um, there's, they can coexist, I guess is what I try to explain to people is that there's families who um, rescue dogs and the only dogs they have are rescues and that's fantastic. They are doing God's work. Um, and that was actually the family we, all the dogs we used to have were only rescue dogs. And um, my entire childhood, we were a foster home for rescue dogs for mostly for Springers, um, Border Collies. Um, and then we had a couple of pit bulls. And then um, we had a couple of bull retrievers. But um, uh, uh, where's I going with that? Um, Oh, but so there's, there was a time like with, when, with me and Drew when, before we had small children, where rescue dogs were, they fit us perfectly. They were great for our family. That was, you know, it was a win-win. We rescued the dog, they rescued us, that sort of situation. Um, when we um, started with Cavaliers, that was right after our uh, toddler son passed away. And so you the reason we were looking for a Cavalier is because we were looking for like a therapy dog, like a, a grief sort of dog. And so we only, um, we only really started, we only began breeding after, or we only decided to begin breeding after we had gone through the process of trying to find a Cavalier for our family. And we saw what a mess it was in the breeding world because it was, it was nearly impossible to differentiate between puppy mills and decent breeders. And it was like pulling teeth to get our questions answered. And by the time we brought Missy home, we had learned so much and we had learned basically everywhere. We had this very strong ideas about the way we would breed them, the way we would raise the dogs and how we felt that our dog should have been raised 
And so that's when we decided we wanted to, we wanted to provide the puppies that um, families like us were looking for. Oh, Lucy, that's a very good point. One of our, um, one of our foster springers, we only kept one out of all of them. And she was the, she was one of those gun ones. Um, we actually got her to the rescue through like a really awful circumstance. I explained it in one of the earlier live streams, but it's not very YouTube friendly. And so I think I was practically not supposed to, but she had been, um, I don't think I can use the word, but she had been through some improper training and, um, it, it made her very, very, very fearful. And so we worked with her. It took several months to finally bring her out of her shell. And she was a beautiful black and white springer. Um, but she was like a crazy springer. She was so full of energy. She was not laid back at all. And so we got her involved in fly ball. And we started her playing fly ball. And when we started her in fly ball, it was like her whole life she got back after that traumatizing experience. Um, I wish I knew what all I could say and what I couldn't. Basically, the trainer told them to do something. I don't even know how they did it. Um, if you're familiar with those uh, collars that tighten when they pull on them, he advised them to use one of those as a disciplinary tool. And she was extremely traumatized by it because they used it for far too long of a period of time as a discipline. Um, and uh, she was in Nebraska. So my, my dad actually was a pilot. At the, well, he's still a pilot. By the time he had just become a pilot. And so he flew out to pick her up, brought her back to our house. And when we put her in fly ball, it was like she got her whole personality back. It was amazing. She was nine months old when, when that incident happened. Um, it was awful. She had to go to the reason that... Um, they, that she'd been put in the rescue and it had all been found out was because she had to be taken to the vet because she had lost consciousness. And so um, when she was taken to the vet and she lost consciousness, the vet, uh, um, I can't remember what happened. I was only 13 at the time. Um, I can't, cause I don't think the vet has like a similar reporting thing, but it was after they took her to the vet that she was taken out of that home and and then that's when the rescue contacts potential families and we didn't have a rescue dog at the time or a foster dog. So we took her and she actually had a home. We found a home for her, but she was such, she wasn't that laid back springer that you mentioned, Lucy. She was the, the crazy dog springer. And so it was an older couple that had taken her. And so they ended up bringing her back. And when they brought her back, we were like, Oh, that was a sign. And so we keep her where we kept her. I know, luckily, you will be so happy to hear um, uh, this guy, this trainer guy, um, the, it, the, we had to do so much um, work with her to like restore her confidence, and she had become so aggressive, and we had had her evaluated by um, behaviorists, and we, um, we wrote a letter, and one of my parents testified in court and he was given seven years in prison for doing what he did. So like that actually has a happy ending. Those stories never had happy endings. Yeah, he was prosecuted and went to jail for seven years. I've noticed the same thing with border collies, Lucy. Um, because we had border collies that were clearly like bred from a working farm, or there were border collies that were bred like more for their looks, more for um, like like AKC uh, confirmation. I know, right? It really was justice for her. Um, it was my dad testified about like how scared she was when he picked her up, and then um, all the training we had to do um, to get her just to just to do normal things like to eat, to, to brush her hair, to, um, I think it was probably almost a year we worked with her and then his court case was ongoing. I wonder if I can find out his name and see what, like when he ended up being released and all that. Cause I'm sure he's out by now. Oh 
she was very traumatized. She was probably like the happiest dog ever once. When we started fly ball, she, man, I wish I had a picture of her. She's such a good dog. I love Springers. I love Spaniels. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not sure that he did learn his lesson. I mean, I, I shouldn't say one way or another because I don't know. I haven't like followed the case or anything. But it was, um, that was back in, that was like 2003. No, that was like, it was earlier than 2003. That was, there. So that was, that was by 1999. And so back in 1999, um, they were not really prosecuting animal abuse or taking it nearly as seriously as they are now. So it's impressive that they <laughs> one and a half labs. <laughs> Every breed has their like has their really redeeming qualities. Yeah, back when we did the dog rescue, there was a lot of story. There was like this that story I shared about the Springer Star. Oh, her name is Star. She was a black and white Springer. But um, that was a happy ending story. But there were we had another dog, another Springer. She was a liver and white. She came directly from a puppy mill, and she had just had a litter. And the puppies were okay, but she was just covered in malignant tumors. It was horrifying. Um, she came to our house and she was just so filthy that it was like, it was hard to love at her because she was just so, she just was covered in, in puppy mill filth. And um, they had, they had done a spay on her. But she was older. She was like, she was seven, but like seven or eight, but so like not old for a dog, but old in the puppy mill world where she's been bred back to back to back ever since she started going into heat. Um, and so we ended up having her put down because she just wasn't, there was no, she had no quality of life. And so like those, those dogs, it's, that's where um, it's like, there's the sad side, but then when, it's nice to like um, then see some of the happy side, or we can raise we can raise them in a warm place, where raise them in an appropriate place where they should be. Hi there, Robert. I wish I could remember that dog's name. It was so sad because when she came, she came to our house. She just laid on her side, and she really didn't do much else. She she was very sick, very just very unhealthy. And what was like made it so much worse was that she had just had a litter of puppies, and so her body was supporting a litter of puppies while she's fighting cancer. I mean. Jesus, if if a breeder at all is doing that, like that's abusive. Like like if we had a dog with cancer that we were forcing to have puppies, like I feel like that in and of itself, no matter how cozy, is still abusive.
Yeah, I think they just so those those particular pub, that particular puppy mill that had been shut down. It was one of those big um, operations where the crates are stacked like four or five high, and um, they're just like in back, hidden by behind trees, sort of thing. And so the owners didn't even really know which dog was who or who had been bred to whom. It was just all a mess. Oh, hey, that's Bella. Please be careful, sweetie. I'm really curious. You've been so busy with puppies. I usually I kind of follow what's going on with like legislation and um, the different movements. I've been so busy with puppies the last year or so that I've kind of lost, um, kind of fallen out of the loop. We had a family from the West Coast get one of our puppies. Um, I don't think we've had anybody from like the literal West Coast, but we've had people from um, New Mexico and Arizona um, like the states right next to California. We have a lot of South. We have Arizona, New Mexico, Florida, Texas. Roman's going to New Jersey, so if the East Coast counts. <laughs> yeah, Canada, don't forget. I've got my Canada mug. Wait, where's the camera? Where's the camera? There it is. Thank you, Heather, for the mug. We do not send puppies by plane. Um, we know that a lot. We've been asked to do that before. Um, and our here is kind of how we feel about it. Um, the... They're not fully vaccinated. Um, they're very small, and um, we're per we're preparing them, hopefully, for a very as smooth a transition as we can for their for going home. And we're, we worry that putting them in the cargo of an airplane would disrupt that that transition. And so um, we don't want to do that. We don't want to um, like ship them via airplane. But so what we started doing in, as an alternative is we started offering delivery. Um, we, yes, even to the West Coast, by the way, just in case you're, you're like, oh, delivery, but to where? Because um, we, we've kind of run into this where um, we kind of have to figure out a solution. Um, and so our solution, because we don't mind driving, we've always driven. When Back when I did rescues, we did... Um, uh, the transport, the doggy transport. And so we'll drive. Uh, we'll drive. We have to stay in hotel. We'll stay in hotel. Um, if, if you need a delivery, a lot of our, um, a lot of our families are older. And so some of them just, if they're in, if they're even just a state away, it's just too difficult for them. And so we'll drive their puppy to them. Yeah, we kind of realized that we need an option that doesn't burden our families, basically, because that's kind of what shipping shipping provides for families is it takes away the the burden of transportation. There's this animal shelter my college trying to get affiliated with, but they won't seem to respond to off emails. Well, that's odd. You would think an animal shelter would would want any, you know, any sort of 
word out or, you know, an affiliation would be great. Oh, I'm so glad that we were able to make you fall in love with Cavaliers. <laughs> They're awesome little dogs. Your name is really pretty, Fiorella. I hope I'm pronouncing it right, but it is really pretty, even if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, good. Oh, Lucy, you're lucky. I feel like, uh, like I had to convince my husband into dogs and I, I feel like I hear from women that they have to convince their boyfriends and husbands. Mary Beth of Rover's makeover dog grooming. I'm gonna have to check that out. You know what, that sounds really familiar, Fiorella, about um, the dog allergy thing. Um, it, sounds, it sounds familiar about, I feel like I had a, a friend or some, somebody who had a, young kids and them mentioning something about it fading with time. Sure. 
Or was it under the butter? I don't know if you guys have noticed or heard Drew's feeding the dogs right now, but um, I don't know if you've noticed that we always make them sit before we give them their food. We always make them sit and wait. Um, the reason for that is because we're making them earn it, basically. Um, we try to we try to live by their rules as much as we can. We try to respect the way that they live and speak their language. Um, they are a lot happier and do a lot better when when we speak their language. Um, and so usually we make them sit to earn their food just so that's quick and easy. But sometimes we'll make them roll over. We'll change it up just to challenge them a little bit. Um, but we don't want them to have, we don't want them to think or to get the idea. Basically, the more, if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile because they, they have this understanding of their world of living in a hierarchy. And so we want to make sure that we are always alpha to them. And so, and some of that, it means like when we walk through doorways, we always make sure we go through first. The dogs always go after us. Um, we never let them go before we do. Um, and so like the food for dinner, for example, we always, we don't feed them dinner until we've had dinner. Um, breakfast, we don't give them food until we've had food. Um, try to give some other examples. Um, but like they sit and then we, we have them wait we put their food dish down and then they're not allowed to get their food until we release them from the weight. And um, just doing that, like with each meal, it kind of helps reinforce the hierarchy that Drew and I are alpha and we're in charge. Thank you, Chip. <laughs> you, follow, you follow a couple sausage dogs. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> It's so sad, Fiorella, about your son. He loves dogs so much that he has this allergy. We actually, one of our, um, one of our Cavaliers, I should actually, I should ask one of our families. Um, Daisy's first litter, she had a, a little handicapped puppy. And the little handicapped puppy we donated to a family who need, really needed an ESA, an emotional support animal. And, um, but that family um, had, has a five-year-old who had previously been allergic to dogs um, when she was younger. And they've had Nemo now since April or May. I forget how old he is. Nemo's Louis eight. Nemo, Nemo's about, no, he's older than six months old. Jenny is six months old. He's probably like nine months old. Um, but I can double check with the family and find out from them just to give you kind of somebody else's first first person perspective on what they've been doing, how they've been managing it. Bradley, please stop drawing money. Yeah, it's, exa it's actually exactly why um, we have Paris uh, with the anxiety. She's so amazing for, I mean, they all are. Daisy is my dog, our little tricolor. She's my anxiety dog. Robin is Drew's. He used to be a little bashful, but now he's proud to call her his ESA dog. Although I think Robin is close to getting the boot for Pom Pom. You're a good girl. Um, a lot, a lot, not a lot, but many of our dogs, many of our puppies, are um, are picked for that purpose. I think about half of Robin's litter. Um, the families were looking for some sort of um, emotional support, some sort of therapy dog type situation. Which is why we raise the puppies in our house with us um, and try to have them be part. We, don't, we want them to learn how to be part of the family. We want them to um, 
We don't want them to have to go home to their families and then learn how to be a dog. We kind of want to do that here. So that's why we keep them in our bedroom until their eyes and ears open so that they can have all the privacy and darkness and quiet that they need to grow and sleep and develop. And then when their eyes and ears open and they are ready to start learning about the world, we bring them out here. We don't want to, we don't want to protect them from all the noise and all of the chaos and then have them um, be really stressed out when they come out and realize there's a big noisy world outside. When the weather is nicer, we usually take them outside, but it's too cold for that. And so we take them for field trips around the house. We try to change up their scenery a little. Right, Pom Pom? Can you do outside too? Yeah, Shalini, that's exact. That's exactly it. Yeah, we have a snowstorm coming in. Um, June and I basically the last two days have been trying to finish Christmas and stock up on everything we need for the next week and a half. Because not only do we have a snowstorm coming, but we live out in the rural area, and our the road we live on and the road that you have to take to get to it are pretty uh, neglected. So we usually just plan to coop up, yeah. Yeah, OMG is right, especially when we have a dog that's about to pop and our vet fortunately is nearby, but you know, you know how that is. You just like to know that you can get somewhere if you need to. You want any more parents? You all
So Drew, I noticed the pattern. Actually, you know, I walked away to change and then got so distracted. Here is the. Let me get this so you guys can see them better. Please ignore our messy house. It's almost Christmas and we've got kids, little kids. What day is today? Birthday?
it can appear only audible. I agree, Shalini. I love hearing about oh, sorry, sorry. I agree, Shalini. I love hearing about you know, especially you guys in other countries. It's so awesome to hear like what's going on elsewhere. And
Hey, Dad, I think we have Christmas gifts in the mailbox too. What? We have Christmas gifts in the mailbox. Okay. Yeah.
I moved the camera because they went to sleep and now they're awake. Hold on, hold on a second, sweet again.
flesh. Um, I don't know. Maybe. I don't think you can do it. Mm -hmm. Ah. How about coming over to the house? How do you blow it? Wait, what? What's that? Yeah, Is it okay for Pom Pom to come over to her puppies? Yeah. I'm trying to get the camera to stay be a little more stable than it is. I see. Yes, we. Sorry, I'm in the pen. I'm. Oh, of course, yeah, I would love to see it.
No, Bella, you cannot. What are you silly puppies doing? Outside. Yeah. Cold. Wind. Like the wind is is frigid. Yeah. But the wind is what just makes it terrible. What? Are you toasting your jammies though? Yes, I am. 
sorry, man. Like, I'm in the pen. Puppies, too. They're being super duper cute here. Come on, we'll get you a piece. I might as well show you. He's got her leg. He's got her leg in his mouth like a ham bone. And she's just letting him chomp on it. Owie, Bluey. Owie, owie. Owie, owie. He's a good boy. Like, I don't know. But I want to nip in my mouth too. Hey, Blue. Hey, Blue. She really is the sweetest mama, Susan. Right. She puts up with so much. And she doesn't have to. Like, they're plenty old enough that we would totally support her setting firmer boundaries. You know, who would it be? Tell her not to. Like, sometimes the puppies need boundaries, you know. Usually it starts with her mom's, but sometimes we have to step in. And a mom like Pom Pom sometimes, sometimes they almost think they need permission from the alphas to start being more dominant. Yeah. Yep, don't worry. See? Nothing you're saying. It's
you got to see the First, we've been having a lot of fun. Um, first, we've just been having a lot of fun. We've been thinking we're distracted. Um, she was very happy to get the done book last time.
understand that you're down there. You're going home. Paris, where are you? No, I don't see it. Here. Cheers, look. Oh, is that your uh, chopper rubber in here? Because I noticed that it was a little misshapen. Oh, yeah, it's misshapen. I thought that it was
Hey, the bear is a stormy bear. Yeah. Hush for me. Bella, that's not Bella. Bella, quiet down. We're going to talk to your sister. Bella, come to your sister. Yeah, it's kind of hard for us. Cheers. are looking more alike. I'm seeing Pom Pom and Paris' uh, face more. Can you see it? Can you see Paris in her face? Somebody on our chat said that um, they thought this looked like a butterfly. And oh my gosh, doesn't it? Isn't that a butterfly? Is that a butterfly or what? That is definitely a butterfly. I don't know how we didn't notice that before. Weren't they right though? Her ears, I cut out some of the masks she had, and I cleaned her ears real well so that um, she was like, 
actually grew prior to labor. Um, so I turned it up. They actually had like a couple of mats on the neck. Well, Roman was using them as like handles. He would jump down on them and hang. And so I took care of that. Um, yeah. Now I'm going to give her a bath one more time. And uh, I'm just going to wait until the shape of Valley Pies to get home. Because I imagine you want to be here for that. And maybe we we want to do it a big thing. Pom pom, no. Pom pom. Pom.
like I feel like I looked like I was at the computer and I looked away. Still never got dressed. It's too cold outside to get dressed.
Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
Oh my gosh, I can't believe we are three days away from Christmas. How on earth did that happen?
Oh, I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, I've been having some problems with this stream running, so I'm going to go ahead and restart it a little bit early. Um, and then I'm going to 
when I restarted, I want to uh, bring the camera down and show you the puppies up close. Um, but so when this one ends, the fresh one should load automatically in your browser if you just give it a couple of seconds. If it doesn't, you can just go our channel page and it'll be right there. Well, thanks for joining us. I hope we see you on the other side.